Have you ever woken up feeling completely fine? Had your morning coffee, maybe your breakfast, and never once wondered if something you just consumed is quietly damaging your kidneys right now? What if I told you that one of the most dangerous threats to kidney health isn't a rare disease, isn't a toxin from a factory, but something so ordinary, so trusted, that millions of Americans consume it every single morning without a second thought. And by the time the damage is discovered, it's often too late to reverse. I'm Dr. Johnny, and after years of working with patients who never felt pain, never saw warning signs, and still ended up facing kidney failure, I can tell you this with certainty. Kidneys don't scream when they're in trouble. They stay silent. And that silence is what makes this crisis so dangerous. But here's the good news, and this is why you need to stay with me until the end of this video. Once you understand what's really harming your kidneys and why it happens so quietly, you'll also learn the simple practical steps that can protect them, starting today before small daily habits turn into a lifelong medical sentence. The first thing you need to understand before we talk about food pills or habits is this uncomfortable truth, your kidneys age even if you feel perfectly fine. I see this every single week in my clinic. People come in confident, active, independent, saying, doctor, I don't feel sick at all. And they're telling the truth. The problem is kidneys don't measure health by how you feel. They measure it by how much silent work they can still do. And that capacity slowly declines with every decade of life. I remember a patient in his early 60s still working, still traveling, still playing with his grandchildren, who was shocked when his lab results came back. His kidney filtration rate had already dropped far below normal, yet he had never felt pain, never noticed swelling, never had any warning sign. That's because kidneys are what we call champions of silence. Medical data shows that after age 40, kidney filtration can decline by about 1% per year, and after 60, that decline often accelerates. By the time symptoms appear, more than 50% of kidney function may already be gone, and at that point, medicine can slow the damage but rarely reverse it. Think of your kidneys like a high-quality water filter that's been running nonstop for decades. It still works, but it clogs more easily, it tolerates less stress, and it has far less margin for error. The real danger isn't aging itself, it's continuing to treat aging kidneys as if they were indestructible. Because once those tiny filters scar, they don't regenerate. They adapt until they can't. And that's exactly why what comes next matters so much. Because aging kidneys don't fail suddenly, they fail faster when daily habits quietly push them past their limit in movement or the lack of it is often the first invisible shove. But knowing this alone isn't enough because there's another factor that silently accelerates kidney decline even faster than age and almost everyone overlooks it. If aging quietly lowers your kidney reserve, then lack of movement is what presses the accelerator. And this is where many people unknowingly cross the danger line. I want you to picture something simple. Your kidneys depend entirely on strong, steady blood flow to filter waste. When you move blood flows like a fast, clean river, when you sit for hours day after day, that river slows, and what slows down begins to stagnate. This isn't theory, it's physiology. Prolonged sitting reduces circulation to vital organs, including the kidneys, starving those tiny filters of the oxygen and pressure they need to do their job. I once treated a woman in her late 50s who told me, Doctor, I eat pretty well. I don't smoke, but I sit most of the day. Her labs told the rest of the story. Early kidney decline, rising blood sugar, creeping blood pressure. Large population studies now confirm this pattern. People who sit more than eight hours a day have significantly higher risks of hypertension, insulin resistance, and chronic kidney disease, even if they exercise occasionally. Movement isn't just about burning calories. It's about activating circulation, improving glucose uptake, and reducing the silent pressure load on the kidneys. The encouraging part is how responsive the body is. Standing up every hour walking just 10-15 minutes daily, or even light chair-based movements, can measurably improve blood flow and metabolic markers within weeks. And here's the shift most people miss. You don't need intense workouts to protect your kidneys. You need consistency. Small movements repeated daily signal to your kidneys that the river is still flowing. Every step sends fresh blood through millions of microscopic filters that are desperate for it. But here's where this gets even more unsettling because even people who move regularly can still damage their kidneys badly if another common substance keeps attacking them 
from the inside and almost everyone consumes it without realizing the harm. But knowing this alone isn't enough because there's another factor far more dangerous and it's likely already on your plate. Even if you're moving more and breaking long hours of sitting, there's a hard truth most people don't want to hear. You can walk every day and still quietly destroy your kidneys if sugar is constantly flooding your blood. This is where kidney damage accelerates fast and where I've seen the most heartbreaking surprises. I remember a patient who proudly told me he walked every morning, never missed a day, but his labs showed rapidly rising creatinine. The culprit wasn't inactivity. It was what he drank with breakfast and what sat on his plate three times a day. Here's the science in plain language. Refined sugar and refined carbohydrates, white bread pastries, sweet drinks, processed cereals cause sharp spikes in blood glucose. Over time, that forces the pancreas to release more and more insulin until cells stop responding. That's insulin resistance, the gateway to type 2 diabetes. And diabetes is the number one cause of kidney failure worldwide. Studies show that chronically elevated blood sugar damages the kidney's filtration units, thickening and scarring them until they can no longer filter properly. By the time many patients are diagnosed, kidney function may already be reduced by 40-60%. But sugar doesn't attack from just one direction. It raises blood pressure, fuels chronic inflammation, and promotes visceral fat and fatty liver, each one adding extra strain on aging kidneys. That's why this damage often feels invisible. No pain, no warning, just quiet decline. The solution isn't perfection, it's awareness and substitution. Cutting sugary drinks alone can dramatically lower daily glucose load. Choosing whole foods with fiber slows sugar absorption and gives kidneys breathing room again. Small swaps repeated daily create real protection. And here's the part that keeps me up at night as a physician. Even people who quit sugar can still unknowingly damage their kidneys with something sitting right in their medicine cabinet. But knowing this alone isn't enough because there's another factor, one most people trust, that can be even more dangerous. By the time many people recognize the damage caused by sugar, they feel relieved like they've identified the main enemy and taken back control. But this is where the story takes a dangerous turn, because one of the most trusted tools for relief can quietly undo all that progress. I'm talking about common painkillers, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen, naproxen, and diclofenac. I've seen patients who cleaned up their diet, started walking daily, and still watch their kidney numbers worsen all because of a small pill they took almost automatically. Let me explain what's happening inside the body. Your kidneys rely on tiny chemical messengers called prostaglandins to keep their blood vessels open and well supplied with oxygen. NSAIDs work by blocking prostaglandins to reduce pain and inflammation, but they don't choose where. When those kidney vessels tighten, blood flow drops, oxygen delivery falls, and the filtration units begin to suffer. Large clinical studies show that regular or long-term NSAID use significantly increases the risk of chronic kidney disease, especially in adults over 50, whose kidneys already have less reserve. The damage is slow, silent, and cumulative. Many people don't notice anything until more than half of kidney function is already gone. I once had a patient with chronic back pain who told me, doctor, it's just one pill a day. But that one pill had been taken for years. We reduced his NSAID use, explored safer alternatives, and within months, his kidney decline stabilized. The solution isn't to suffer in pain, it's to stop self-medicating blindly. Talking to a doctor, limiting NSAIDs to short-term use, considering acetaminophen when appropriate, and using non-drug strategies like physical therapy or heat can protect your kidneys without sacrificing quality of life. And here's the unsettling part. Even people who avoid sugar and painkillers can still overload their kidneys every single day without realizing it. Because the next danger doesn't come in a bottle or a prescription. It comes hidden in plain sight on dinner plates across the country. But knowing this alone isn't enough because there's another factor, one most people think they've already controlled, that can be even more dangerous. By now, many people feel they've identified the big threats and think, at least I don't add much salt to my food. And that belief is exactly what makes this next danger so powerful. Because salt rarely hurts your kidneys through the salt shaker. It hurts them through what you don't taste. I've had countless patients look me straight in the eye and say, Doctor, I barely use salt while their blood pressure tells a completely different story. The issue isn't what you sprinkle. It's what's already hidden in bread sauces, deli meats, canned foods, 
frozen meals and restaurant dishes. Here's what the science shows very clearly. More than 70, 75% of the sodium Americans consume comes from processed and prepared foods, not home cooking. Excess sodium forces the body to retain water, increasing blood volume, and driving blood pressure up. And hypertension is the second leading cause of kidney failure worldwide right behind diabetes. Those microscopic kidney filters are delicate when high pressure slams through them. Day after day, they scar harden and slowly lose function. This damage doesn't happen overnight. It builds quietly year after year until one day, the numbers finally reveal what the body has been compensating for all along. I once worked with a man who swore he ate normally. When we tracked his sodium intake, it was more than double the recommended limit almost entirely from foods he thought were harmless. When he learned to read labels cooked more at home and rinsed canned foods, his blood pressure dropped within weeks and his kidney labs stabilized. That's the power of awareness. The goal isn't bland food, it's control. Herbs, spices, citrus vinegar, and natural seasonings can restore flavor while giving your kidneys real relief. But here's the twist most people never expect. Even if you control sugar, avoid painkillers, and cut back on salt, your kidneys can still be overwhelmed by what many believe is healthy strength food. And this final factor often decides whether aging kidneys stay stable or tip toward dialysis. But knowing this alone isn't enough because there's another factor even more surprising, and it may be sitting at the center of your plate right now. And now we arrive at the one that shocks people the most because it goes directly against what many of us were taught growing up. Excess animal protein, especially red meat and processed meats, is often praised as strength food, muscle food, good nutrition. But for aging kidneys, it can quietly become the final overload. I've sat with patients who did almost everything right. Less sugar, more movement, careful with medications, yet their kidney function kept slipping. When we look closer, the common thread was what filled the center of their plate every single day. Here's what's happening inside your body. When you eat animal protein, especially in large amounts, your body breaks it down into nitrogen-based waste like urea and creatinine. And your kidneys are the ones responsible for clearing all of it. Research shows that consistently consuming more than about 1.2 grams of animal protein per kilogram of body weight per day significantly increases pressure inside the kidney's filtering units, accelerating scarring, especially after age 50, when kidney reserve is already lower. Processed meats make this even worse. They deliver a triple hit high protein load, extremely high sodium and chemical preservatives that kidneys must also filter. I remember a patient who proudly followed a high-protein diet to stay strong as he aged. Steak for dinner, deli meat for lunch, eggs and bacon in the morning. He wasn't overeating, he was overloading. When we shifted his approach, smaller portions of animal protein, alternating with lentils, beans, chickpeas, and plant-based meals, his lab values stopped worsening. Not because protein is bad, but because balance gives kidneys a chance to breathe. Plant proteins generate fewer toxic byproducts and are far easier for aging kidneys to manage. And this is the part I want you to hear clearly. Protecting your kidneys doesn't mean giving up the foods you love or abandoning your culture. It means honoring decades of hard work your kidneys have already done by not forcing them into permanent overtime. Because when kidneys are given relief, they often stabilize and sometimes even recover more than doctors expect. But knowing all six of these dangers still isn't the end of the story. Because what truly determines your future isn't fear. It's what you choose to do next starting today. If you've stayed with me until this point, I want you to pause for a moment and take a breath because the most important message today is not fear. And it's not guilt. It's awareness and hope. Nothing you've heard in this video means you failed and it certainly doesn't mean it's too late. In fact, the very act of listening right now tells me something powerful about you. You care about your health and you're willing to protect it before a crisis forces your hand. Your kidneys are not fragile decorations in your body. They are resilient, intelligent organs that respond remarkably well when the pressure is reduced. I've seen patients stabilize their kidney function, slow decline dramatically, and in some cases, even improve lab numbers, not through extreme measures, but through small, consistent changes, standing up more often, drinking water instead of sweetened drinks, reading one food label, questioning one pill, balancing one meal. These choices may feel small, but to your kidneys, they are acts of relief signals that help is finally arriving. 
I also want you to remember this kidney damage doesn't happen overnight and protection doesn't need to either. You don't have to change everything today. Choose one habit, just one. That's how lasting health is built, not through perfection, but through repetition. Your future self 10 or 20 years from now will thank you for the decisions you make quietly, consistently starting now. If this video helped you understand your body a little better, if it answered questions you didn't even know you had, I strongly encourage you to save this video, not just for yourself, but so you can come back to it when life gets busy or share it with someone you care about, a partner, a parent, a friend who might need this information more than they realize. Knowledge only protects us when we keep it close. And if you want to continue learning how to care for your kidneys with clear, honest, medically grounded information, I invite you to subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. Every week we share practical insights based on current medical science. No miracle claims, no shortcuts, just real tools you can use to protect your health and independence. The goal here is simple, to help you stay strong, informed, and in control for as long as possible. I read your comments, I listen to your questions, and many of the videos we create are shaped directly by what you share. So tell me what surprised you the most today, which habit felt uncomfortably familiar. Your voice matters here, and your experience may help someone else feel less alone. I'll leave you with this final thought. Aging is inevitable, but losing control over your health is not. Your kidneys have worked for you every second of your life without complaint. Taking care of them is not a burden, it's a form of gratitude. And when you choose knowledge over fear, awareness over habit, and consistency over extremes, you give yourself something priceless, the chance to live longer with energy, clarity, and independence. Thank you for trusting me with your time today. Take care of your kidneys with intention. Take care of your body with wisdom. And I'll see you in the next video.